we're going to build a relic. So the way I see it, most relic jobs start off as a reductive process, meaning you're taking away material, taking away some of that finish. Now, it is additive at some point in the relicking process. You're adding pigments and tints and adding things, but for the most part, it's reductive, right? This relic job is going to be additive, meaning we're going to use a stencil. So I found some stencils on Reverb. I think they're kind of interesting. I don't know if they work or not, but I did buy one and it's on its way. And the idea is you place the stencil on your body and then you paint, right? And the paint only covers the areas that are stencil free. So then when you peel the stencil off, you're left with basically the relic job that would have been a reductive process when you were relicking. So I thought that was really clever in the way that it kind of saves time and it alters the process. And I'm really interested in like different processes. So I thought, what a really cool video. I don't think anyone has one on YouTube. That being said, let's open up the Stumac stuff, take a quick peek. So let's go ahead and do this unboxing. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is using Z epoxy for the grain fill. Because this is a mahogany body, I'm a little worried about the pores. Since it's a relic, I'm not so worried about the pores and grain filling. So I really need to experiment to see what it means to relic like a mahogany type body that has pores and requires grain filling. And then we'll put the stencil on and then we'll hit it with the white vinyl sealer. And the white vinyl sealer is going to give us that sort of white undercoat. So we'll have the poor filling, grain filling, then we'll have you know it leveled, then we'll add the white vinyl sealer and level if we need to. But it's gonna allow us to, once we actually have the paint on, to remove a little bit of that lacquer with some lacquer thinner to reveal like the white undercoat, which is what most relics have. So it is an additive process, but there's gonna be a little bit of reductive methods involved too. So we'll do the, the white vinyl. And then instead of using a clear gloss, and instead of having to use clear nitro and then like wet sand between coats, I'm gonna use my standard satin. So the satin doesn't require any type of wet sanding and it's self leveling. And it's gonna give us already that matte look of a relic guitar. So instead of having to make a clear gloss uh, overcoat and then having to like scuff it to make it look matte. We won't have to, it's just going to be satin. So this is the Stumac kit. This is the bare bones, basic, cheapest one they offer, the S style. Definitely all mahogany, which is kind of cool. So we do have quite a bit of pores, like there's definitely or filling that's going to be required. So what we're going to do now, next steps, is apply this epoxy. Wet down to raise the grain. Let that dry for a bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
I find it fascinating that most builders build and they fly blind for the most part. They perform their action, they go through their process, and they just assume that it worked. And I've always been a big champion of magnification. So I got this cool new device. It's the Atom Star Digital Microscope. This scenario right here is going to be to kind of double check the pore filling. So right now I have the mahogany body on the base plate and I've kind of dialed it in to look at the pores on this guitar. And this is what it looks like. So immediately you can see that there is this fine white dust from the resin sanding that is inside the pores. So this is one coat of the Zepoxy resin pore filler. Now, if this was a level pore filled body, you would just wipe the body and I use, a, I use a tack cloth and it wouldn't be in the pores. It would just be wood. You wouldn't see any of this white dust, but because there's still pores, the white dust fills those pores. So this definitely needs another coat. I've already put one. It probably needs two, maybe three. So the great thing is there's no guesswork anymore. It takes the guesswork right out. I just put it on the table, look under the microscope, and I can get my answer. But it's a fascinating little device. I'm really glad that I have it. I'm going to use it for pretty much everything. Let's move on. Let's take a look at the stencil. I got the stencil in. So I bought this on Reverb. Let's go ahead and open it up. I think it's just sandwiched between cardboard, so I'm not going to worry about damaging it. Ooh, look at this, flippin' cool. So it's a vinyl stencil, and we'll stick this onto the guitar, and then we're gonna spray, and the spray will, it will go wherever there isn't stencil, right? So these little sections, and then where there is stencil, it'll be bare wood. That's the plan, easy peasy. So it's an additive strategy, right? We're not scraping with a scalpel or an X-Acto blade to take the paint off. We're not using sandpaper. We're not using lacquer thinner. We may use lacquer thinner, but it's more of an additive process. Brilliant. All right, so I have the stencil here and it is a very heavy, heavy relic. Almost like an SRV Stevie Ray Vaughan relic. So everywhere you see white is where there's going to be paint, right? So imagine it's white paint. That's where the paint is going to be. And anything that's blue is going to be bare wood. But the problem is, not only a problem, this blank is a four piece and there are two seams on it that are pretty visible. And it's this section here to about right there. And then this section here and there. 
So what I want to make sure is that there's paint covering that area. We can have bare wood exposed, but we want paint covering those seams essentially. So I'm going to modify this stencil simply by just using exacto blades or these scalpels. So let's go ahead and start cutting and see if we can actually get away with this. This looks killer. It looks really killer. So I'm just using a piece of that non-stick backing and I'm just getting those edges to go down. Now there are some air bubbles, but I'm not gonna worry about those air bubbles because this is a mask. So all that we care about is the crisp edge here. It doesn't matter if there's an air bubble here in the middle or here. And there's a crease here, a crease here, and all that doesn't matter. All that matters is we have that crisp edge because everywhere you see brown is where there's going to be paint. So you kind of have to like think about this like inversely. So all I'm doing is pushing this stuff down. Look at this tiny little piece here. Isn't this gorgeous? Like these little pieces that are just amazing. And the cool thing is I have a little bit more of the stencil that I cut out. So I cut this part out so I can put more of these little itty bitty bits in here that just are just tiny little bits of eye candy. So now I'm going to grab this little bit. I'm going to put it somewhere cool here, like maybe right there. So now all this line is for the most part exposed. Now, right here towards the end, you don't see the seam. So the colors of the wood are close enough so you don't see it. So I'm not worried about that. Here's where the, you really see the difference. And that's what we want covered with paint. So there's a tiny section here that we want to expose also. So I'm going to just do the same thing. I'll do a little bit of undercuts, those make it look a little bit more random. Nice. Again, I wanted to try this on the body to see if that was a method that was valid, and it is. So you don't have to cut very deep for this, and I'll just put this one like right here. Come back around. That. 
So what I'm going to do next is use these bits that I cut off and just cut a little bit of little detail work. I'm just going to randomize this. Sometimes I want like long slivers and sometimes I want like teardrops like this one here because it kind of tapers off. So I'll put this like that. Hmm, I want this. Ooh, that looks good. So I'm done painting. So let's go ahead and take off all this stuff. And I'm gonna start easy stuff, which is the blue painter's tape on the edges. So the vinyl sticker stencil was a 100% success. It just looks phenomenal. And it was easy to put on and it was 
fairly easy to take off. Now I ran into one issue where the vinyl sticker would leave behind a sticky residue on the bare wood. And when you'd peel the vinyl, the paint would chip off that vinyl and get stuck to the sticky residue all over the body. Now I tried a couple of different things. I was using canned air to blow it, but in the end, you don't have to worry about it. Let it stick, no big deal. All I did was use Goo Gone. And Goo Gone is just like a citrus-based oil, and it took all that gooeyness off and all those paint chips off. Very simple, easy to do, you wipe it. It didn't impact any of the actual paint, just the gooeyness and the chips. Here's the front, and it looks fantastic. I get to play around with it at this point, and I bought some walnut stain because I want this mahogany to be really dark. Problem with mahogany is it's got this orange hue to it, which I don't think complements the pink well, so we need a very, very dark chocolate brown. So I'm going to be putting the stain on first. Then we'll use some lacquer thinner to expose the white underlayer, but it looks great. I think that this stencil is a valid way to build a relic, or at least a different way. We're done. Came out awesome. Looks pretty killer. The whole point of this process was to determine whether using a relic vinyl sticker was really a valid way of doing this, and I think the answer is yes. It was pretty quick. I mean, I went from paint to relic in like less than a day. Now, I did spend time with a razor, six Nacto blade, trying to get into some minor details. I don't think that's necessary unless you wanted to do something like that, but I was experimenting. So I did experiment with these x -Acto blades. I did experiment with lacquer thinner and acetone, and they were all just experiments, and they're all very useful tools to get this relic job done. Let's just recap real quick to see what we've done to get to this point. We started with Z-Poxy to fill the pores. I had one coat and then kind of pivoted and decided just to add and leave the one coat and not continue with filling the pores. I thought that having the lacquer sink into the pores would give it a little bit more of a relic look, so that's what I went with and I do like it. Then we added the vinyl sticker, shot the white vinyl sealer, then shot the pink shell pink vintage color, and then we added the satin nitro on top. Removed the stencil, used Goo Gone to get rid of the goo, super easy. Then added the walnut stain to make it brown, and I wish I had stopped there. But I did use some Angelus other dye that was brown, it had a lot of reddish hues, and the reddish hues really turned a lot of this mahogany yellow, especially on the belly cut and on the sides, and I kind of hate that. So I would recommend just stick, sticking with brown, 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 not reddish brown or orange brown. Then I used um, acetone, which is a nail polish remover, to expose the white vinyl sealer so it lets you uh, have a lot of control using an acetone to really remove as little as the paint as you want as opposed to lacquer thinner which just in one go will remove everything and make a mess then i spent a quite a bit of time with the exacto blade so some of this to just really kind of dial in some details and this part also is not really necessary from you know six feet away you don't see these kind of details but from close up you do, so you only need to add these if indeed you're going to be really looking at this in fine detail. So that puts us about right here, 
And this is a good place to stop for this video because it was just a proof of concept, just to see if this was a valid process. And it is. So next week we'll age the plastic parts, the very same plastic parts that came with the kit. We'll age the hardware. I do some unique things there as well. And then we'll also work on the electronics. But for now, let's just call this, it's done. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.